Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Container ships are not only some of the largest vessels in the ocean, but also some of the most important. Evolving out of the flat bottom barges used to ferry cargo down rivers, these intercontinental ships have grown exponentially over the years. Modern versions are typically around 1300 feet in length. and can hold approximately 15,000 containers at one time on their massive flat decks. Despite significant advances in logistics over the years, these ships remain the primary method of moving products of all kinds from one place to another. In fact, at any given time, around 6,000 of these enormous ships are operating on the world's oceans. With so many ships fighting waves and heavy weather, it's understandable that cargo might get lost in the ocean from time to time. Lost shipping containers are a big problem for the shipping company. The company that owns the products inside and the environment. Indeed, it's estimated that around 1,300 containers are lost at sea every year. resulting in fines, lost profits, and expensive recovery operations. And as the ships get bigger and the cargo containers are stacked higher, this number is likely to increase. In fact, Cargo ships increasingly rely on more treacherous routes to make up valuable time on the sea, leading to more container-related incidents. Unfortunately, it's difficult to estimate how all of this is affecting the oceans. The Monterey Bay Research Institute is one organization that is attempting to figure this out. They found that many containers end up in marine sanctuaries. Where they can damage coral reefs and reduce biodiversity. It's also possible that the paint used in container manufacturing may be toxic to some marine life. The increasing frequency at which cargo containers are lost overboard has led to the development of a whole new industry. Container recovery. In Australia, the Container Recovery Project uses massive ships and advanced equipment to locate and retrieve dozens of containers a year. The process begins with underwater submersibles.
which use robotic arms and tools to cut a series of holes into the metal frame. These holes allow chains and braces to be attached. A metal cage is then lowered around the cargo container with the ROVs placing any nearby debris or products that have fallen out of the container into the cage as well. The contents can then be raised to the surface and removed from the cage for salvage or destruction. While organizations like the Container Recovery Project have made retrieving these lost containers more efficient than ever, preventing container loss in the first place remains the main priority. The Maritime Research Institute Netherlands has invested a lot of resources into discovering how and why containers fall off of ships. Focusing on a particular event involving the MSC Zoe, Marin evaluated the weather and wave conditions using a series of computer models. Afterward, they created a scale model of the MSC Zoe and placed it in a wave pool. After more simulations, they were able to identify several factors that contributed to the container loss. For starters, most container ships use a hook system that secures the lowest cargo container to the deck and all subsequent containers to one another. Though made of steel, they are susceptible to the vibrations caused by the repeated rolling and heaving of ships in certain weather. Over time, these vibrations can cause the lashings to weaken and give way spilling multiple stacks of containers at a time. Waves also played a factor, as their repeated pummeling of the cargo containers could sometimes push them over toward the deck, allowing them to spill even more in the process. The Coast Guard is the primary organization responsible for monitoring the shores and waterways of the United States. Though it's considered a division of the military, its roles range from maritime security and customs enforcement to search and rescue. It's the Coast Guard's job to screen merchant vessels for potential security threats. They also inspect all manner of cargo and fishing ships for unsafe or illegal activity. In many cases, they are the first line of defense against smugglers and traffickers. Storms frequently cause large waves that can capsize boats and throw people overboard. It's the Coast Guard's job to get those locations of these incidents as quickly as possible. And perform quick search and rescue services for the endangered sailors. However, there is a benevolent side to what the USCG does. Not only will they help escort cargo ships that encounter bad weather or other challenges, but they can perform medical evacuations in the event of an accident or fire.
Sometimes, shipping containers have a completely different use altogether. In 2019, a 660-foot-long car carrier capsized in St. Simmons Sound off the coast of Georgia. The Coast Guard was immediately dispatched to locate the crew. And all 23 members were eventually rescued. The ship itself was a different matter. Insurance companies had declared it a total loss. But it, as well as the 4,000 cars it was carrying, posed a significant hazard to the local environment. The MV Golden Ray was operated by Hyundai Glovis and was based out of South Korea. The ship was also now exposed to saltwater corrosion, which had started to weaken the structure. This was made worse when a fire broke out on board a year after the initial sinking. In the end, the salvage project took years to complete. First, the Coast Guard, aided by several salvage companies, needed to remove around 300,000 gallons of fuel. It was then decided that the MV Golden Ray should be cut into eight pieces and removed through the use of heavy lifting vessels. Like the VB-10,000. This massive twin gantry catamaran consisted of two space frames sitting atop two separate barges. These trusses stood around 240 feet high and allowed the massive sections of the ship to be successfully removed and brought to shore. The final pieces were not taken out of the water until September 26, 2021, just after the second anniversary of the sinking. When the VB-10,000 removed the final section of the Golden Ray, it was a major event for people all over Georgia and beyond. Now we have completed the largest wreck removal in U.S. history. Our responders have performed over 3 million man hours. Uh, the removal of this section is the culmination of a careful coordination between the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, our partners with the United States Coast Guard, the responsible party, TT Salvage, uh, and numerous other agencies and organizations, including Gallagher Marine. Over the years it was in the water, the ship had become heavily corroded. Though this made cutting it apart with the massive chain easier, it also spilled toxic paint and other materials into the surrounding bay. Like the previous section, the compartment was placed on top of a flat barge for removal from the recovery area. In the end, it's important to realize that the health of the ocean depends on the world's collective efforts. Fortunately, shipping companies are improving at keeping their containers where they belong. and protecting our oceans in the process. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.